All right, I finally got the core one from Prusa. And for those of you who are new here, this channel is pretty new. So when I asked Prusa to send me a core one as a review unit, they kind of chuckled and challenged me. They said, you're a brand new channel. Get about 100,000 views first, and then we'll talk about sending you a unit. Well, since this printer's here, the channel's gotten over 1,000 views, and I got the printer. But I'm not gonna take it easy on Prusa, because it's been about six months since the core one started shipping. And initially, everybody had nothing but great things to say. All the reviewers said, this printer is finally something amazing from Prusa, and I didn't really see a ton of the issues that people now are starting to talk about. Once this got in the hands of real people printing, Reddit was lit up with, this thing has VFA issues, the buddy camera isn't great, and a bunch of other stuff. So the whole point of this video is to try and address things that have come up in the past six months. So I received the assembled version. So setup was an easy 20 or 30 minutes before I was able to just start printing with it. But there's one small detail that I think perfectly captures why people either are obsessed with Prusa or hate Prusa. Initially, these printers shipped with long foam strips for anti-vibration fee, and I saw a few people complain. It's something small, but they wanted Prusa to do better. And when I got this, I fully expected to see those strips, and I didn't. I saw improved kind of corner pieces. This response is exactly why some people love Prusa. They actively listen and quickly correct mistakes. But an equally valid take is that some people are annoyed at these issues. But since no machine is perfect, I like knowing that an imperfect machine will get better over time. Aside from that small change, my setup went smoothly. Thankfully, as a little aside, Prusa sent over a few new rolls of filament. They sent over their Galaxy Black PLA, which personally is my favorite glitter PLA. Uh, it hides layer lines pretty well. Uh, they also sent over 95A TPU, which I'm excited about because I made a video about TPU. I couldn't find Prusa Mint TPU, so I had to get some cheap stuff, and I really wanted high quality TPU instead of the cheapest thing I could find on Amazon. Uh, I also got Ultramarine Blue Pet G, which is, I think, a really cool color from Prusa. I haven't seen it before. And obviously they sent their Prusa Orange PLA. Now let's dive into the real stuff. I know this isn't scientific, but I did a few practical tests to help compare the enclosed core one to my Mark IVs. Why compare these two? Well, VFAs happen because printer motors resonate at certain frequencies, and that causes subtle vibrations that create these visible artifacts on printed surfaces. Core XY printers, especially enclosed ones, can amplify this resonance due to their design and enclosed structure. Bed slingers, though, like the Mark IVs, typically experience a lot fewer of these resonance issues because the open design and kind of simpler motor configuration help disperse the vibrations. But that's my only slightly informed understanding of how that works. I'm sure somebody can correct me. The first test was just this white cylinder that I printed. Honestly, white is not ideal for spotting imperfections, but I did notice that the Core One produced a noticeably kind of shinier, smoother finish. The Mark IVs actually looks a bit more matte. So there's a little difference, but not in terms of imperfections. For the second test, I switched to a black PET G, and I printed a few more shapes. Both printers showed some minor imperfections, but I didn't notice any VFA-specific artifacts. The one thing I did notice is the Core One just printed a better cone. Uh, the top of it, it's still a little messy, but nowhere near as wonky as the Mark IVs, with some sanding and cleaning up, I'm sure this could look good, but out of the printer, I like the Core One better. Next, I printed the exact same file, but with orange PLA. And this is an even harder to tell test. I think all of these look pretty good. I don't see any real difference other than maybe the first few layers of the uh, Mark IVs are shinier than the rest of it, but overall, it's great. Uh, the reason I did that is because I saw some Reddit posts and some YouTube videos saying that Different filaments will show VFAs differently. Fortunately, I saw no VFAs on either. So the first thing I printed with this printer was a Deadpool statue bust thing. And I did it just because I wanted to test out the printer. But when I showed it to an engineer friend of mine, before even thinking of VFAs, he was genuinely shocked with the lack of them. He said this was one of the cleanest prints he's seen. And he uses 3D printers for his work all the time. So. He was impressed with this. I didn't even think of VFAs at first because there just was none. It's a great print and I really like the quality. And then finally, 
I printed a few kind of pencil holders. One is way more complicated than the other. And I did this for my wife's office just because why not print something a little more useful? I tend not to print a ton in PLA just because I'm trying to print functional parts, but I did with this and I saw no issues at all. So what does this actually mean? Well, it means that my personal core one doesn't have any VFA issues. It doesn't mean yours won't. It could just mean that I got lucky or Crusoe's also on the Reddit expressed that they're fixing these VFA issues with different belt tunings than they normally would. So maybe that's what fixed this. Don't let the VFA issue be why you don't get this printer because one, there are fixes and two, not all printers have them. My experience is it's great. Okay, another surprise was I thought that enclosed Core XY printers were really just for printing the ABS and the nylons and stuff like that difficult to print engineering materials that need an enclosure. I heard that the Mark IV wasn't even slower than the Core 1. If anything, I heard it could be a little bit faster in some situations, but that's not my experience. The Core 1 is anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour faster on longer printing parts, so roughly about 10% or so, because I tested this and I put the same parts on both. I did the experience for the VFAs and I realized the Core 1 is printing these so much faster than the Mark IV S, which was something I didn't actually expect. So what's my actual final verdict on the Core 1? Well, I love the printer. And I've started trusting Prusa more because I got one without any issues. Sure, they released products before they're actually polished, but they consistently improve over time. With that being said, if perfection is your expectation, either get a different printer or wait a few months after launch. So now is a good time to get this because it has been that kind of six month window. Also, Prusa's support is incredible. I had an issue with my Mark IV S, I ripped the entire hot end out because of my issue in installing a nozzle. It bent, it ripped apart, it was a mess. But within a few days I had a new part and Prusa diagnosed, sent the part, and helped me fix it in no time. But even though I sound like a Prusa fanboy, I have to actually talk about the real downsides other than six months ago, maybe don't get the machine, but now it's great. One downside is this doesn't come standard with a hard nozzle. It should be standard on a printer that's over $1,100, and it isn't. It is with other brands, but Prusa hasn't caught up with the times. All right, number two, even though it's getting better, the MMU3 is still clunky compared to brands like Bamboo Lab. I haven't purchased one for this because it is clunky and it seems really complicated to use, even though it's better at having less waste. I don't think I'd want it until it gets better. And for a premium machine, it should be as easy to use as the competition, and it's just not. All right, third thing, last thing is, a combination of all the small stuff, like the outdated interface, the slow Wi-Fi module, and a few of the other bits and bobs on the printer that people look at and say, everybody else is doing this better. The interface, the UI is so outdated. It's sure, it's familiar for everybody using 10 year old Mark IIs or Mark IIIs or Mark IVs, but when you're paying $1,100 in 2025, you want a responsive, intuitive, and a simple UI. Maybe have a mode where you can switch to this mode for the tinkers and folks like that. But for the general population, you want a simpler to use interface. Overall though, despite some of the annoyances, I love my Core 1. Prusa's dedication to always improving their products after launch and listening to the community, plus the excellent support they had and the issues I had with the Mark IV S, make them a trustworthy choice for me. I don't know of a single other company who would have their founder in Reddit threads answering questions and trying to just get feedback from users. I love this machine, I think it's awesome, and it's finally a time where I can say, get the core one. I think they're working out a lot of the issues and it's about time where that first phase of problematic machines are getting out of the way. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.